My name is Ksenia Irmoshana and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at uh, nextleap.eu, European project on encryption and privacy. If I need to locate the moment when I started thinking about the actual state, uh, the role of the government in the world, uh, it started when I was uh, a teenager. Because as a teenager um, in Russia, in post-Soviet times, uh, you don't have a lot of space to be in. Like you don't have a lot of free space, free public space. So what we used to do as kids is we were spending a lot of time on the roofs. On these roofs we were doing all the stuff that normal kids do, normal teenagers do. But then at some point uh, the government started blocking the, uh, blocking the access to these roofs. So we can call it like roof censorship or something like this. We had no access to, to this free space. Uh, and uh, the state was um, legitimating it as an anti-terrorist measure. So at that point, I was 15 years old, and I firstly heard the uh, word terrorism uh, associated to this kind of roof, no, environment setting. So I started thinking about what is terrorism and why state wants to control all the free, all the free public space. And from that point, uh, I started developing some ways to uh, get uh, into these spaces to hug them somehow and also to think about how we can uh, actually protect ourselves from the state. So starting perceiving state as an active agent in like observing people, <laughs> and controlling their access to basically all resources, starting from roofs and to the information finally. Later on my political uh, engagement became a bit more classical. So I was involved in two ways apart from roofs. <laughs> roofs were some kind of entering point, but then um, we, we created a, um, an organization that was making uh, hap happenings and performances, uh, again, in the public space. So, uh, for example, we were trying to provo provoke the Orthodox Church that was taking more and more importance in uh, the life of Russian citizens. Uh, and uh, on the other side, uh, we were doing more institutionalized engagement, so we created this trade union, um, anarchist trade union that is called Studenческое действие, student action. We tried to like, build it in a real, like, decentralized way. But then uh, this, um, was, th this was one of the problems uh, because not everyone was using the same uh, information, <laughs> uh, like inf informational security practices, so some of the people were very uh, how would I say, lose, uh, they were not taking uh, enough precautions. So we had some leaks, we had some um, people uh, who went as undercover agents uh, on our meetings and I would receive uh, mails with attached files that were uh, uh, audio files uh, with my own words during the meeting uh, that was off the record uh, and I was uh, thinking that no one would record it, but actually the undercover agents were recording everything and then uh, sending it to me, asking, do you want us to publish it or do you want to stop your activities? So um, we started receiving uh, mails like this. The core of the trade union started receiving uh, personal uh, threats. For example, they found out about my family problems. Uh, they made a lot of investigation and they would use uh, targeted threat uh, as a way to intimidate us. So that made us change the tools that we used uh, also uh, force all the newcomers to use encryption, uh, encrypt mails all the time. And uh, so we had this uh, infinite sessions of installing uh, Enigma Mail and <laughs> Thunderbird and um, explaining to people how to use it correctly, how to verify things, uh, how, to, what, how to deal with keys. So it was hard and we started losing people because of the tools and because of the actual state like the back to 2012. And later, after this whole story with trade union finished, <coughs> I decided to continue my research career because um, it became dangerous uh, for me to stay in Russia and uh, being openly politically engaged. When I moved to France, uh, to Paris, uh, to do my PhD, uh, I uh, found immediately people who were active uh, in France. Later, um, I found that the most natural way to help people would be uh, to organize a um, um, new form of security trainings that um, 
I also call crypto parties, um, borrowing this name from the international crypto party movement, but I take it uh, literally. Uh, party means party, party means music, because people don't only uh, want to learn how to use tools, but also want to try to communicate using these tools, maybe immediately after they get uh, uh, in, introduced to this. So how would we create a proper setting that would mix the very serious things with something fun? And uh, we coined with my friends this concept of uh, Trans-Siberian. Um, Trans-Siberian uh, party is a mix of a classical crypto party and installed party with uh, uh, live music. So I bring these young people with no political background, no hugging background, try to seduce them with music and maybe convince two or three persons at the end to go start using GPG, for example. So if I want to explain why the adoption rate is so low, then um, there are several hypotheses. So first of all, um, some of the people who come to trainings are curious. They are curious without having real uh, political uh, urgent necessity to protect themselves. They are concerned with privacy, as all privileged uh, white European citizens have uh, concerns with privacy more than with security. Uh, it means that uh, they don't want to be um, targeted um, by some advertisement companies, but they don't feel that it's really like threatening their life. So they like this event that would um, be like a bifurcation point that would tell them, hey, since now, from this very moment, you start encrypting your communication. Um, those who had these events, those who were uh, f who faced uh, real uh, threat and uh, aggression, uh, turn uh, to encryption much easier and, and adopt uh, it quicker. But at the same time, um, all these trainings uh, are useful even if the, from the first time uh, users do not switch to these tools, uh, they um, have the awakening effect. It's like a switch. Uh, so they want to learn more and they come back and uh, several trainings after they adopt some of the tools. I think that GPG is a tool that is very important for uh, journalists that work uh, in a difficult uh, context such as uh, Ukraine and Crimea especially, uh, where people need to, to send uh, en encrypted attachments to mails and also encrypted, long encrypted texts. Uh, that They couldn't hold it with the help of instant messenger uh, and they really need mail uh, to uh, exchange. Uh, I speak about journalists because uh, this is one of the publics that uh, I was um, happy I had a chance to interview for my research uh, at Nextleap. What I see from my research is that GPG stays as the most uh, trustworthy uh, tool um, for journalists in post-Soviet countries uh, and they rely a lot uh, and they depend a lot on this and uh, in their work and maybe it saves lives, I hope so.